Okay, right off the bat, I'm going to tell you that there's not going to be any editing to this video, and I'm sure the title was Don't Get the Medicare Advantage Plan or something like that. I haven't even made the title yet. But here's what I want to tell you. So we're coming into the open enrollment. A lot of commercials are coming on. A lot of people are wondering, hey, I have this Medigap Plan G or Plan N, high deductible G, whatever you have. You might be thinking, should I go with a Medicare Advantage plan? And all over YouTube and the internet are videos and, and uh, articles and so forth saying, don't go with it, do go with it, this one's better. I'm going to kind of break it down at, as non-biased as I can because I actually have clients on the Medicare supplement plans uh, for years, uh, over 10 years, and, and the Medicare Advantage plans for over 10 years. The reason being is because each individual is different. Now, the way that Medicare probably works for you, and it works for many people, is when you first get onto Medicare, you're 65 years old, you're at the youngest point, unless you're disabled and you're under 65. But let's just say you're 65 or over. You're at the youngest point getting onto Medicare as far as the senior population, which means your prices are going to be cheap, your uh, inexpensive rather. Everything is going to seem very inexpensive. So maybe you just got off a plan that you paid for yourself per month. Maybe you and your wife or maybe you and your kids, whatever it may be. You could be paying $700 a month for your plan. Now you get onto Medicare, all of a sudden you're like, wow, I can get a G plan which is the top plan out there, and it's only gonna cost me 125 a month or 150 a month. This is not so bad. I go to the doctors, I go to the hospital. I, it seems like I don't pay for anything, which is 99% true. You're only gonna pay for that Part B deductible. Anytime you go to the hospital or doctor and it's necessary, you're not gonna pay for anything. But here's the thing, a lot of people and I've seen them on YouTube, they've been in the industry for many, many years, and they really know what they're talking about. They see it where someone was 65, they're paying 150 a month, now all of a sudden they're 75 or 77 or whatever age it is. Now, if they were on a Medigap plan, they're stuck on that plan, and they're paying $400 a month or something like that. Now, a lot of times, what I'll do with my clients is I'll they'll might complain about the pricing. Most of the time, nobody complains about the pricing when they're 65 or turning 65. They think it's inexpensive. But when they start getting up there in age, especially if they are unhealthy or they have some kind of condition, meaning if you're 75 and you're healthy, you say to yourself, hey, I've been on this plan for five years or 10 years, whatever it may be, you're able to look at another company. From, let's say you're on a G plan you're able to look at another company and say, oh, this company has the same G plan and it's cheaper. I'm just going to switch to that. But if you're unhealthy and you can't switch, a lot of times, or maybe you can switch, but it's expensive with all the companies, this is what creates, hey, what else is out there? Now, the Medicare Advantage plans, I will not say that they're the worst things out there because I do have clients. I put f about 50 people on a medic of my own clients uh, on Medicare Advantage plans last year alone. Reason being, I am originally from Philadelphia. The five counties surrounding Philadelphia have a Blue Cross plan that is really, really good as a Medicare Advantage plan. And there's a thing called a trial right, which a lot of people don't talk about. I don't see a lot of agents talking about this. And the reason that this is so important, the trial right, if you've never been on an Advantage plan before, and you're on, let's say, a G plan, an N plan, an F plan. I even have clients that are on a J plan, believe it or not. Some of you older agents out there or agents that have been in the business, you remember the J plan. Well, they are like, hey, I'm paying $500 a month for my plan. That's 6000 out of pocket no matter what. I'm not really going to the doctor that much. Or I had a heart attack a couple years ago, but it's, it's fine. I just take some meds. I tell them, hey, you can do this trial right. And for up to 12 months, you can go on a Medicare Advantage plan and try it out. If you're unhappy with it, whether it is month one, month three, month 10, whatever it is, you can go back to your old plan that you were on and without health questions, just switch right back. Now, if they were to go from a plan 
G, let's say, and go to a Medicare Advantage plan and stay on that plan over 12 months, it's not like they can't go back, but they're going to go through underwriting. So if they have health conditions that will keep them out of that G plan, they're done. They're going to be on a Medicare Advantage plan for probably a, the rest of their lives or a really long time. That scares people. Another thing about the Medicare Advantage plans is they top a lot of them top it off at 7500 a year. That's the max that you'll spend. Now, I remember when I was a little bit younger, I was paying for my health insurance. I still pay for my health insurance. One of the major questions that I look at or ask, because believe it or not, I have a, a broker for under 65 health insurance. I don't do it myself. I ask, what is the max out of pocket? If I walk out on the street, I get hit by a bus. I'm in the hospital for four months. What is the max out of pocket? Well, for for the Medicare Advantage plans, that's 7550 I think, for most of the plans this year, 7550 Now, if you're on a G plan and you're paying $500 a month, you're already paying 6000 That's before you get to your prescription plans uh, and everything that is combined with the Medicare Advantage. That might seem like, hey, I'm already paying this high premium. Let me check it out. But if you're only paying $200 a month, you times that by 12, that's $2,400 for the year that you're paying for basically nothing out of pocket if you're on a G plan, let's say. So that's $2,400 no matter what. So you're paying it up front, but if anything happens, you're gonna, let's say you're in the hospital for a month, then you have to go to a, a, a nursing facility or something like that. Your, your, your costs are covered. You're only going to pay that 233, or, well, next year, 226, I think, for your um, deductible. And that's it, 220, 226 for the year. Um, so basically, you have to look at what is your max out of pocket when you're on a Medigap plan, Medicare supplement plan, like a G or like an N. Look at what you spent for the year total. And then you look at the Medicare Advantage plans. And hey, look, they have vision, dental, and hearing combined. They have prescriptions. So some people say, hey, you know, I don't go to the doctors that much. I'm going to roll the dice. Me personally, I know a, guy, a lot of guys, or a lot of men and women that are agents in the um, selling Medicare plans. I have yet to meet someone that said, yeah, I had a client that maxed out at 7550 Now, I don't know everyone in the industry, but I haven't been told like, yeah, my clients paid over 7000 last year and then they paid another 7000 I have some sick clients that are on a Medicare Advantage plan. And I hear like, oh, I spent 30, I always say, keep track of it. They say, I've spent 3500 for the year. Well, that starts to look pretty good. Now I've also, I have doctors as clients. I have nurses, I have, you know, a doctor, his practice actually burnt down a few years ago. But he's very in tune with with the insurance companies, obviously, because he's a doctor, he sees which companies pays, talks to the secretaries. But he told me he can't stand the Advantage plans. And I said, why? He said, well, you know, my uh, such and such had uh, got dementia and, you know, it didn't pay for this, that, and the other thing. Well, I didn't really get into it because his, his family member was not my client anyway. So there's no reason for me to really dig into it because with dementia, you're not, she's not going back into a G plan or anything like that. And she's not my client. So it's really none of my business. If you ask me questions, I can answer it. But basically you have to look at, well, how much would the G plan have covered this nursing home and so forth? How much would the Advantage plan have covered? Because it might not have been the insurance plan. You know, maybe she should have had long-term care insurance and she didn't. So, I mean, sometimes you're like, oh, this doesn't pay for it, but maybe the other plan doesn't pay for it either. So it's really on a person to person basis. <clears throat> Excuse me. I've had clients that I have switched over to. I have to call all my clients now that switched over last year. I only had two take the trial right and go back to their old plan out of 50. And it's a little over 50, I think. So that's a pretty good number of the ones that stayed there. But that's not to say that, hey, you know, they're not scared about the future or they want to switch back. I have to call them and say, hey, you know, you're getting to that 12 month period. Do you want to switch back? Are you happy with the Advantage plan? I live in Florida now. There's tons of Advantage plans. They're, they're a mess. I mean, it's kind of like, which one do I choose? There's all these different names. Which doctors take it? You know, what hospitals are in the network? From Philadelphia, I, I know that this one plan that I put my clients on, it's a zero premium plan. I've looked up 
hundreds of doctors and the network is huge because it's Blue Cross, it's in uh, Philadelphia, there's five surrounding counties, All pretty much 90% of the doctors take it, maybe more than 90%. So every time I look up a doctor for somebody, there it seems like they're in the network. So I feel comfortable putting my clients on that, especially for a trial right, because they can always go back. It's, you know, it's, it's almost like a test. So that is where I'm at with Medicare Advantage plans. There's a lot of people who can't afford to put money out of pocket um, every month. They just can't do it. You know, maybe they're in that middle class range or just above, you know, where they can get on a cheaper plan or whatever it may be. They get help from the state. A lot of people are not in that situation. They might make a little bit over where they get help from the state. Let's say they make like 40000 a year, but maybe they took money out of their house and they still owe a payment. There's all sorts of scenarios. So it's very hard. And like I said, there's a lot of great agents out there. I've watched their videos. They know exactly what they're talking about. And I've seen where they hate the Advantage plans, where they like the Advantage plans. But really, it's a person by person basis. And I think they know, you know, they know this and they, they go over, you know, different things. And they've probably seen horror stories with the Advantage plans because there are horror stories. There's also, you know, where the G plan or F or whatever it is, where clients are like, you know, I've been paying for this for three years. I haven't used it once. I have clients like that. But you really have to weigh in. What it's really, what are your financials? What's going on in your financials? You know, that. Everybody wants to save money, but sometimes it's like, hey, you know, I can't, uh, I can't do that. I just had a, an issue where my car is stuck in Fort Myers, Hurricane Ian, and you know, it's like I had to go buy a new car, and I still have that car down there in storage. It might be in storage for three or four months. Who knows? You know, the towing companies are not towing out of Fort Myers and um, different areas down there where Hurricane Ian just destroyed. I mean, they, their, their tow trucks are all over the place. All the cars are underwater. I can get into the story why my car is down there. But thank God it was an older car or whatever. But it's also insured uh, to the max. So if something were to happen, I can get a, an insurance check, you know, wrap coverage and so forth. Because I look at my financials, I say, what can I actually afford? And then if this goes wrong, what am I going to be able to afford? So that's the way it is with the Medicare Advantage plans versus the Medigap plans. Look, I always tell people, if you can afford it, you want to be on a Medigap plan, and it's a pain in the neck. You have to get a separate vision drug, uh, vision plan, drug plan, uh, dental plan. I get calls all the time about dental, and it's a pain. I mean, it's kind of like a, a buffet. You have to put it all together, and sometimes the dentists that they have don't take their dental plan. And But when it comes to hospital and doctor, there's no better coverage as someone, let's say, turning 65 right now that uh, – could get than the G plan or whatever. There's no better coverage. Every year, uh, there's something, whether it be the F plan or the J back in the day. There's some top plan that if money's not an issue or you know the person is just being cheap or trying to pinch pennies or whatever it may be, there's no better plan, plan than that G plan. But sometimes financials come in and you have to look at certain things like the um, Medicare Advantage plans. So that's my thought on it. I hope this helped you. Um, once again, it's it's a crazy year, this 2022, but this is the way it's, if you're watching this video, it's 2024, it's pretty much probably going to be the same thing. Not much changes in Medicare from year to year. There's little things that change, but as far as the Medicare Advantage versus the Medigap plans, we've been talking about this for 15 years, so not, nothing much has changed. Hey, thanks for watching the video. I'll see you at the next one, and please subscribe to the channel or give me a thumbs up. Take care.